In this session we are going to take a look at JDK Enhancement Proposal number 374 in Memory Access API. This uh, particular GEP has been introduced in incubating mode in Java 14. As with the majority of our other examples we are going to take a look at the motivation for its existing and how the world looked pre-Java 14. Uh, particularly we are going to look at Java Neo byte buffer, which I'm pretty sure a lot of you are already familiar with. And we are going to consider the basic FMA examples in the core APIs. Um, notably, memory segment is probably def is definitely the most important. We are going to study memory address and memory handles, uh, something which is extremely useful for uh, developers that are used with higher level programming is the memory uh, layout. Last but not least, we are going to explore the potential that this um, JDK enhancement proposal brings to the table. Uh, one of the use cases being uh, large scale in memory analytics. There are some other use cases that we are going to explore as well, but stay tuned. Before we proceed with our examples, uh, there is something that I, I have to recommend to you. Uh, please allocate some time and read um, the material um, available at FOSDEM 20. Uh, this was a conference that happened at the beginning of February in 2020. Uh, they have uh, a lot of sessions about uh, Java uh, in under the area free Java dev room. Uh, probably the most important pertaining to the subject we are going to treat right now is the presentation from the owner of the GEP, Maurizio uh, Cima D'Amore. Uh, the presentation is called Byte Buffers Are Dead, Long Live Byte Buffers. I definitely recommend before continuing uh, seeing this, this video to actually see this particular, uh, particular session. Um, it's a um, 40 minute session, very, very interesting. It presents the features and probably, hey, you won't even need to take a look at my, at my video. However, if you decide to take a look at the, the video, the, the source code is constructed like, like this. All the classes are available under the package com github kbnt java 14.fma. Uh, and we're going to have three examples, byte buffer example, which uh, we're going to treat at the very beginning. The basic APIs are covered by memory, uh, foreign, foreign memory access examples. And the last one is going to be the sleep analytics. Um, it's, it's the one that we're going to treat the, the last. Before we take a look at our first example, let's have a quick recap and some preparation work. Uh, first, let's uh, look at the uh, JVM heap and what that is compared with foreign memory. Now, when uh, Java Virtual Machine came around, um, it, it came with a, with a big advantage, and that is the uh, automatically the allocation through garbage collected. What that means compared with um, other platforms or languages, more precisely languages like C and C++ that were uh, very popular that date, was the fact that you can do the allocation of objects by yourself, but uh, there was an automated mechanism to do the allocation. Uh, colloquially, this uh, memory was called, where is called heap. Uh, I won't go into the details of, of what heap memory is versus stack memory. Uh, that would be a, a tremendously long discussion, but um, I would say that uh, the automatic deallocation of uh, of the memory through the garbage collector was one of the main traction points for the adoption of this of this language. Now it's worth mentioning that garbage collecting it's a very very hard problem, and um, it's extremely uh, difficult as I as I mentioned here to avoid uh, the process of the so-called process of stopping the world. So when the garbage collector kicks in, uh, it needs to um, be very careful about the way the allocation happens. And no matter how you design these algorithms, it's almost unavoidable to uh, have uh, your virtual machine stop for, for, a, uh, for a brief moment. And the bigger the heap you are having, and when I say bigger, it doesn't necessarily mean the size of the heap, but it also matters how many objects you, you have in it. 
the bigger the problem and the more difficult for this uh, garbage collecting algorithm is, is going to be to, to release the, the memory. So throughout the, the, the years, the GVM designer thought of the idea, well, can we avoid this uh, uh, garbage collecting for, for large, large heaps? Is, is it something that, that can, can be done? And one idea that was introduced in uh, Java uh, 1.4 was to store some information or to allow storage of certain information in, in, a, in a memory which is outside the, the heap, essentially outside of the Java virtual machine uh, memory, right? And that's called the foreign memory. One option that was introduced in Java 1.4 was uh, the so-called uh, byte buffer or Java Neo dot byte buffer API. We're going to take a look at it um, immediately. I just wanted to mention that in this example, um, the script to run it is run for in memory access dot shell. Uh, what you will need to specify as a parameter for the amount of memory we want to allocate here is this minus xx max directory uh, direct memory size, uh, which in our case is going to be 12 gigabytes. Uh, that is the, the maximum. Also as a preparation, um, I'm going to uh, use here a popular tool for uh, processor memory um, and general resource uh, monitoring, uh, which is called HTOP. Uh, it's available on the majority of the Linux distributions. <clears throat> what this shows essentially is uh, in pretty simple terms. I have four cores on, on the machine that I'm doing this demo from and uh, my total amount of memory is uh, 16 uh, gigabytes that, that you see here. Now as you can see I have quite a large amount of space available. Uh, it's only 2.74 uh, gigabytes um, uh, occupied at this moment so there is enough room for, for me to, to allocate a lot of, a lot of memory. One other uh, tool that we are going to use and is also very very popular is the jconsole. So we are going to use uh, jconsole to monitor the the heap uh, for the example that I'm uh, that I'm introducing. Now let's look at the example itself. So what we are going to to do here is allocate uh, four times byte buffers uh, of size integer max value. One of the uh, first limitations of byte buffers, the API that has been introduced in uh, 1.4, is the fact that you cannot allocate more than two gigabytes. Imagine we want to store into our memory a byte for every individual on this planet. We will need 7.7 .7 billion bytes, roughly, right? And we cannot simply have a byte buffer that has that, that size. The API would not, not permit. Uh, the other limitation with this with this API is the fact that if you want to do the deallocation of the memory, you'll need to first get rid of all your references to the byte buffers, so that the garbage collector, when kicking in, will get rid of or will deallocate the, the external memory, and that is outside your 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 control. So with those with these two limitations, uh, we are going to look at the newer APIs that, that are being introduced, with that, which are more, more generous to us as, as, as developers. So without further ado, let's try to run this example. As I said, we allocate four times uh, the, um, the maximum size of, that a buy buffer can, can take. Then we are actually going to uh, wait for, uh, for the alloca allocation and then um, force the deallocation invoking the, the, garbage, the garbage collector. So we still plenty of, have plenty of room to, to um, expand uh, on, on, our, on our memory utilization. Let's go ahead and just run the, the example. So I'm just going to go ahead and start it with my script. While it's going to run, I'm just going to monitor the, the processors here. So as you can see, suddenly the memory got filled up up to 10 gigabytes. And now we are in a state where, where the output says buffers allocated. Now type enter to deallocate and garbage collect. So before going ahead and doing that, let's look at the um, JVM using Java console. See what is the size of the heap. So I'm going to connect to my application, which is this one over here, com github kbnt java 14 fma by buffer example. 
yeah I'm gonna be okay with an insecure connection and as you can see the heap utilization is actually less than 15 15 megabytes uh, let me make this smaller so the the graph uh, is clearer also if we take a look at the utilization in in this space you you'd see the same same effect so all the memory that we allocated is outside of of, of hip now this being said let's go ahead and try to deallocate so when we type enter here we say clearing the buffers forcing garbage collecting let's see what happened with the memory there we go so our memory went back to almost the, the original size which was two point uh, almost three point gigabytes of, of consumption once I finish this process entirely probably the allocation will happen even even forward yep it went to 298 after looking at some historical um, evolutions in the access to foreign memory let's now focus on the newer APIs that are added uh, in Java 14 and we're just gonna jump onto the memory segment API probably the most most important one and this line of code that I'm highlighting right now shows how you can actually allo uh, allocate a uh, hundred bytes natively that is foreign memory and one important aspect that you can uh, you can observe is that this particular resource is auto closable a feature we actually felt in love with starting uh, Java 7 I think right so if you allocate this at the end of this try block right, this segment is going to be deallocated right so the developer is in the control of the life cycle for this uh, um, resource right this is very very important because byte buffers do not do not support this now we allocated the memory 100 bytes and we want to write into this 100 bytes 25 integers right a java integer is represented on on four bytes so the way we are going to do this we iterate through our 25 integers in this for loop uh, we are going to use an API called var handle. By the way, var handles have been introduced in Java 9. It is not the purpose of this particular video to address var handles, but uh, hey, if you are interested in the details of this, leave a comment and I can make a dedicated video to var handles. And here, um, using this, this API, we are going to set the value at the address, which is the base address and we're gonna do all the time this computation like what is the offset where we actually want to write right and we're gonna put the, the integer value right there um, note that uh, in order to access uh, memory within the memory segment there is a net another API which is called memory address which effectively gets you a reference to a memory zone um, in into this this memory memory segment I won't go too deep into the math of um, um, calculating the offsets. Uh, it's pretty intuitive. Again, you have four bytes per um, integer. We keep shifting four bytes till we write all the, the array into the 100 uh, bytes. Now, uh, to make the example more compelling, because I wanted to stay away as much as possible from slides. Uh, what I'm going to do is write the content of this byte buffer into a file. Um, this is the piece of code uh, that I'm highlighting right now. And we are going to analyze the content of the file. I think it's much more compelling and much easier to, to actually understand. So without further ado, let's uh, go ahead and run our example. Uh, there is an important uh, output line that I added. Uh, we are interested to see uh, what is the byte ordering on this particular machine. And you can see we use a little endian. This means that the most significant byte uh, in that integer will come last. right? So expect to see the least significant byte, the, the, the first. Now let's open the content of this uh, file that we just, uh, that we just wrote. So I'm going to use a tool called WX, 
uh, X hex editor. Oh, that's a mouthful. <laughs> uh, and uh, let's take a look at it. All right, for convenience, uh, I arranged the uh, line of this editor to be four bytes, so we have a precise alignment when, when we read the information. So as you can see, at offset zero, we wrote our first byte, which is actually value zero. I'm not sure if the font is large enough, but trust me, this is zero. And then as you we can progress, you can see that we have one, two, three, and so on and so forth till we get to number 24 which is the last integer we wanted to write. The upcoming examples are going to use the same, uh, the same pattern to, to, to make the, the point. The upcoming example is a slight variation of the previous one. Uh, it comes with two important differences though. Number one difference is that in, instead of allocating the memory directly into the RAM, we actually take advantage of a very, very, very powerful, I can't even emphasize hard enough how important that is, uh, feature which is uh, memory mapped files. So we are going to sort of write into the random access memory of our system, but that content the, is, is going to be automatically synchronized with the file by the operating system itself. And this is very, very powerful, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, the next one is, instead of doing the math that you saw in the previous example, where we were doing all the, the calculation, right, with the, with the offset, we are going to uh, enhance a little bit and we are going to specify two coordinates into the var handle instead of a, of a single one. And those two coordinates are going to be the uh, base address and the sort of index where we want to write that, uh, that integer. So let's take a closer look at the, the example and I'm going to focus for the sake of time just on the important uh, uh, lines and the differences in the, in the example. So as I said, number one, the memory segment that we uh, observe uh, here is instead of being allocated directly from memory, uh, we uh, map it from a, from a path. We specify the file where the content should be synchronized. We specify the size, how many bytes do we actually want, and the map mode is going to be read-write, which tells the operating system that we are going to perform both read and write operations to that, to that file. The second important difference is that the var handle, right, uh, where we are going to use an additional var handle, which starts with an integer var handle, but specify, specifies a stride, right? So uh, the stride is four because we do the multiplications by, by four. This particular var handle, as you see, takes an additional parameter, which is this coordinate. So from the base address, we're gonna tell it, look, go ahead and at the index of integer number i, place the, the value of the, of the integer. Let's go ahead and, and uh, run it. And as in the previous example, we are going to uh, take a look at the content of, uh, uh, of, the, of the outputted file. So uh, let's use the hex editor. File open. And The output, as you observe, is uh, identical with what we produced earlier. Starts at zero and uh, goes up to 24. As we will see in a bit, doing all these calculations for um, memory addresses and offsets, it's, it's a complicated business. Uh, not impossible, but quite tedious for a for a, de um, for a developer to 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 do. So uh, the designers of the APIs introduced um, uh, an extra uh, utility uh, for for us, the, the developers, called memory layout. With memory layouts, you can actually line out how essentially the the pattern of the the memory you are giving to use looks like. So exactly the examples we had previously, we are going to rewrite them using this, uh, this memory layout. And, and again, this is code uh, inspired from the uh, G, GP code base itself. So if you take a look at this memory layout sequence right, uh, of this API, we create a sequence. right? 
we specify the number of elements in that in that sequence and what is the layout of the the, the sequence itself so what we are going to put here is 32 bits which is again the integer right Re representation in in java the int representation using the native order um, we've seen earlier that we're using um, a little endian but that should not matter so again 32 bits taken 25 times and from this memory layout we actually derive the var handle that we are going to use as as, as writing um, i'm gonna write this uh, i'm gonna <clears throat> um, run this this example but don't expect any output differently than what we've seen so far uh, that's why we w are not going to even take a look uh, anymore at this uh, produced file um, you can you can do this if you if you run the, the example uh, by yourself so compile and run yeah again this is going to be the the file where where the output is going to be and that would be your sort of uh, homework if you if you want to analyze it to be able to go deeper into the memory layout uh, apis and the capabilities they they offer i constructed an an example that uh, follows this this logic we want to have in memory an association between the social security numbers and the credit scores uh, for uh, the guys watching this video that are not living in in united states um, in plain uh, terms the social security number represents your identification number issued by by your government and the credit score is a number between 0 and uh, I think it's say 150 or, or something like that uh, that represents how good are you in essentially paying off your your debt in case you you have debt right it, it's a much more complex story than than this but let's keep it simple so I'm going to define here a memory layout, which is a structure, right? The structure consists, as I said, of the social security number and the credit score. Now, the social security number is an array of characters. It has nine characters, right? That's, that's the definition. All the SSNs in United States are following that, that, uh, that pattern. So what we want to represent here is a sequence of nine characters. As you can see, I am defining the sequence uh, starting from um, value bits equal to the to the character size right now ask yourself or um, you can think about it the character size uh, for Java is 16 uh, bits so um, or two bytes so we are watching it uh, using 18 bytes of memory now the integer as in the previous examples uh, we all know it's for four bytes right now we want to put or place into into the memory a hundred of such uh, such um, instances of, of this this structure so we are going to create another memory layout that is derived from the structure we just defined and that memory layout is going to be a sequence in order to access the content we are going to define two um, handles one is for the social security number and the other one is for uh, the credit score and as you can see, the uh, handles are defined as, for the SSN, we base ourselves on the character class. Then we refer the first sequence element, which is from the SSN credit. Then we point ourselves to the group element called SSN, which we define up here. So again, you can name actually in a, in a structure uh, those, uh, let's say, children layouts. Okay, and then we go one level deeper, which is the sequence element here. Remember, this was a nine sequence element. For the var handle that uh, is associated to the credit score, the situation is a little bit simpler. We just uh, base ourselves on an int class. We refer to the path um, uh, element, the sequence element from the SSN uh, credit um, array. And then we just uh, point to the group. Uh, define over here okay as in the previous examples I'm going to uh, map from a path right so whatever we are going to uh, write into memory here is going to be automatically flushed to the to the hard drive and we are going to analyze that that content 
So in the um, in the example, we are going to have again a try block where we allocate the segment. We start with the base address, and then we are going to iterate through the number of elements. Right? Remember, we have a hundred such uh, key value pairs, if you will. We are going to construct fake SSN numbers, and the way we are going to construct them, we are just going to start with one, two, three, four, five, six, and zero, zero, zero. And they are going to start from this number up to um, yeah, this number with <laughs> an extra uh, 99. And then we are going to set the ch the characters right at the coordinates that we, we mentioned here. Remember, we leverage SSN handles. We specify three coordinates in this case. right? First one is the base memory address. right? The second one is the index in the array we are at. And the third one, the third coordinate is the index of the character. Right? So unfortunately, this is a little bit too, uh, or, or not too low level, but it's low level uh, operation because we are going to write it character by character. Right? For the credit score handle, the situation is much easier. It's practically what we observed in the, in the previous, uh, previous example. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and run the example. And let's analyze the content of that file. Uh, before we analyze the content of that file, um, note that memory layouts uh, have a sweet capability of uh, displaying the, the layout. If, if you call a to string on, on layout, it is going to actually show you what the actual uh, what the layout is. And as you can see here, you can observe we have 32 bits allocated for the credit score with a bit alignment of 16. Now, bit alignment is going to be a, a, a different and more complicated story. I won't go into that, but again, leave a comment if you feel that this needs more uh, more in-depth um, analysis. And then we have an array of nine uh, characters. Again, you, you see 16 bits associated for each one, and they are labeled as SSN. And all this structure, we are going to repeat it in memory a hundred times, right? This this number here. Now let's look at the content that has been written to the uh, to the to the drive. And for this, I aligned the uh, the viewer and the uh, editor to show me 22 bytes per uh, line. So again, we are going to get a very very nice um, uh, alignment here. And as you can see. Uh, here we we have the uh, social security numbers, as I was mentioning, one, two, three, four, five, six, and so on. This would be the char set, but suddenly you have these ugly characters here, and this is the uh, this is the integer value associated, the credit score, right? So you can see um, the the individual that has social security number one, two, three. 456000 has a credit score of 700 exactly as we we wrote our code and that's uh, that's that's it we just iterated through all this and uh, this is the the produced outcome of the of the file um, and we go up to 100 right so the maximum score we we got is 799 so far, we've seen um, historical details of um, accessing um, foreign memory access. Um, we looked at, um, um, how to say, the basic constructs uh, to access, again, uh, FMAs uh, in the features added in JDK uh, 14. Uh, but how about we construct a more uh, complex and comprehensive example? So we're going to look at an example that does or tries to simulate uh, sleep analytics. This is a scenario where we assume that we analyze the time, uh, to be more precise, the hours when people go to sleep and when they um, they wake up. Um, we will introduce a bias for this. Um, we are going to assume that the people go to sleep between um, hour uh, 20 and uh, 23 uh, or, or midnight. And uh, we are going to uh, wake them up between uh, 6 and uh, maximum 10. Uh, for for this, we are going to use, uh, to represent this information, a byte for each individual. Um, so the f first, uh, the most significant bit is going to be the sleep bit. And the last five 
uh, bits in this in this byte are going to represent either the awake or asleep uh, asleep hour, and the details are are presented uh, presented here. Um, now, in order to do this um, analytics or simulate this case, we are going to start two threads. One thread is going to populate uh, the memory uh, that that we have with random data. Right? Uh, we are going to alternate for each individual the awake asleep uh, mode, and we are going to uh, randomize through these uh, hours that we preselected here, um, just to uh, just for the simulation purpose. The second thread is going to be a thread that will continuously um, um, do scanning of this memory zone uh, with the purpose of gathering statistics. We are going to take a look um, at the code in, in, a, in a bit. Now, having this scenario, uh, we are going to split into, into two subcases. The first one is going to be in-memory large data analytics, where we essentially keep all the um, information that we have about the population uh, on the planet, 7.7 uh, .7, uh, billion people in memory. That means we are going to allocate 7.7 .7 billion bytes. Uh, that is going to uh, lead to 7.7 .7 gigabytes in our in our memory in memory, right? So we are going to use pure uh, random access memory. The second scenario uh, leverages exactly the same code, but we are going to uh, twist it to, to showcase uh, potential database simulation. So let's assume that we want to write database software that actually captures this information into, into a file. So for this, you'll see how easy it is to leverage or to use memory map files to run exactly the same, uh, the same scenario. I arranged this scenario in such a way that um, it's going to run about three minutes. Um, it's going to simulate the, the analytics. And in that time, we're going to take a look at, um, at the code base. As you can see right now on my uh, computer, uh, the processors are fairly relaxed. Uh, memory utilization is 3.2. Uh, let's go ahead and, and start the example, see how memory gets allocated and how analytics starts. So I compile and run. And now you can see some processor activity here. And suddenly, uh, the, the memory is being allocated. So you can see memory segment allocation for 7.7 .7 billion bytes uh, has happened in uh, 3.6 uh, seconds. That was, uh, that was fairly fast. And uh, now what, what happens, we are, again, we're going to go uh, fairly quickly through, through the code base. Uh, we are doing an initialization uh, of this uh, of this memory, so let's take a look at it. As I was explaining, first we do an initialize, which is uh, we are going to allocate uh, or, uh, allocate the, the memory. Uh, that was the step that we actually saw earlier. The memory segment has been uh, allocated. Um, now we are going to do a pre-population um, and we are going to alternate each byte. The individual represented by that byte is going to be either awake or, or asleep. And um, yeah, this, this phase is still going on. We didn't see anything in the, in the output, uh, output yet. Uh, so it's probably going to, 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 take a, to take a while. After this happens, we are going to start three threads. Uh, and number one thread is this uh, data gathering here, where we actually uh, going to populate the memory in a um, sequential manner and continuously with uh, hours when people uh, wake up and when people go to go to sleep. Uh, the flip state here um, is the is the code that does the byte transformation. In parallel with this thread. Uh, of execution, we are going to have uh, a thread that gathers the analytics, right? So this thread leverages the same uh, memory segment. You can see we start from the original memory segment, we acquire it, and we are going to um, to use it as in, in the read-only mode. So any attempt to write code <coughs> into this uh, into this memory is going to to, to fail. 
Uh, let's see in the meantime what is happening with our code. Uh, okay, well, what you can see here is uh, the data has been pre-populated in, uh, uh, in 81 seconds. Um, looking at the processors, you observe that uh, two of the cores uh, are, are actually working really hard. They represent uh, the two threads, uh, doing the one doing the analytics and the other one doing the, um, the data uh, population. And uh, <clears throat> we are already having the first analytics uh, um, results here, and I'll explain them uh, briefly. The analytics thread being a read-only thread is going to uh, go through the memory segment much faster than the one that uh, writes random random values, right? It's simply because it does much less uh, less operation, right? So remember at the beginning we we pre-populated everything with uh, alternates of people sleeping and and being awake, but we didn't put anything in the hour. So that's why the first run of the of the analytics shows us that. Um, the people either wake up or go to sleep at hour zero, which obviously is <clears throat> really, really incorrect. We see that the other thread that populates the data managed to populate some of the hours, but it didn't. It wasn't able to traverse the entire memory segment. So definitely, we need to uh, to give it more time to to run which we are actually going to do and you will see that over time these results would be would be corrected all right so now let's get back and, and till till the application is running uh, focus a little bit on uh, on some of the important aspects regarding memory segments and, and uh, um, using the using the memory um, in the initialization phase um, as I mentioned we allocated in this particular uh, sub scenario um, we did an allocate native of 7.7 .7 million so everything is in is in RAM but keep in mind this uh, main segment right uh, it's part of the main execution th thread however I mentioned that we are using two threads so whenever you are going to uh, access a memory segment from a different thread you can just access it as it is. You will need to acquire it. So, in the case of um, the in the case of the data gathering, right, the data acquisition mode, uh, we are going to do an, an acquire, and we are going to leverage this gathering segment, right? Uh, please observe that when the thread is going to finish, this is going to be released as well, right? Because it's a try with resources. Uh, what I'm what I'm doing here. Uh, I was mentioning earlier that for the display of the statistics we acquire from the same main segment here, but this time we are going to acquire as uh, read-only. So writes into this particular uh, thread are not going to be uh, to be possible. Uh, let's take a quick peek at, at our example. See uh, if there was any any additional progress. Oh, there we go. So um, we we observe that we had a complete uh, full memory traversal from for writing, uh, which completed in 167 uh, uh, seven seconds, and then we have much more accurate results for for our result uh, for our analytics. We see that we have 3.85 billion people awake and 3.85 bil uh, billion uh, people um, asleep. And we actually observe the distribution of, of threads. In the meantime, the, the application also finished. We observe the distribution of, of, uh, of hours, right? For the uh, going to sleep hours, we see 20, 21, 22, and 23 uh, with approximate uh, similar distributions. And 6, 7, 8, and 9 also with, uh, with, with similar distributions for, for waking up. Um, you see the, um, the messages at the end of, of the execution here saying that we finished the data gathering thread and finished the, the statistics gathering thread. Uh, it's definitely worth mentioning the fact that um, in order to uh, be able to release, uh, release the, 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 the memory segment, you need to actually release all the acquired memory segments, right? So 
here I'm interrupting all the executing thre threads. Um, if you take a look at the code, whenever I'm interrupting them, uh, let's actually do that. Um, whenever I'm interrupting them, the execution uh, is going to uh, to finish, which will lead to these triad resources uh, being uh, being completed. Which, as I said, in turn will means that the gathering segment and the stats segment, two segments that we acquired, are going to get uh, aut automatically closed. Now we give a brief time for the threads to uh, to do a uh, clean shutdown, and then we actually close the the, the main segment. And um, that was the example for the in-memory analytics. Let's uh, look at the next one, which is going to be a simulation of the database. For this case, we are going to comment the lines where we do actually the 7.7 billion uh, bytes allocation. We're going to also decrease the execution time and we're going to flip from uh, memory mode right, uh, to uh, MMF mode. So let's take these three lines, comment them out, and uncomment these ones. All right, so we are going to uh, just use um, a million, uh, no, actually it's going to be 10, 10 million um, um, individuals for, for our study. Uh, mode is going to be MMF, and the execution time is going to be much, much short, shorter. It's going to be uh, about uh, 10, 10 seconds. So uh, let's go ahead and run the example. Um, as you will see in the output, the example is going to run much, much faster uh, because we, we, we use um, much smaller memory. Let's let it finish. As I said, it's going to take uh, about 10, 10 seconds. So we are done. Um, Statistic-wise, it's no different than, um, than the previous one we follow we, or we have um, almost the same same distributions for for the hours um, clearly we talk about 5 million people that are asleep and 5 million that are, are awake uh, much uh, smaller smaller population but uh, what is uh, the big difference between the previous example is the way we actually allocated the, um, the, the memory segment so in our previous case, we didn't allocate native. However, in the uh, memory map files case, we um, we are going to persist our memory into a file. Um, we are going to call this uh, file sleep uh, database. So the memory segment um, is is obtained by mapping from from that file. Uh, we're using the map from path um, API. Now. Keep in mind, when we close the segment, um, um, the operating system will probably right, finalize uh, writing uh, everything to the, um, uh, to the database as, as well. Uh, we do not know, we cannot control uh, when the operating system does, does that uh, throughout the, the execution. It probably does uh, uh, best, best effort. But when we close it, we expect to have a consistent uh, a file which is consistent with the content of the of the memory. So uh, let's go ahead and take a look at that file. Uh, so I'm going to open the sleep DB, and this is the content of the file. As you can see, um, the, um, the the file is um, is reported here 9.5 uh, megabytes, right? Uh, we just said 10 10 million bytes, and in the file, you see uh, a sign uh, which tells us that the synchronization happened uh, correctly between memory and, and file. You see this alternate um, between uh, uh, nines and, and zeros here, uh, which tells us that uh, the most significant bit um, has been uh, minus one uh, or uh, no, actually one or, or zero, right? In in the eight-bit representation, this 94 means minus 108. Uh, next value is going to be clearly seven. Then we took a, another negative value, which was minus 107, and so on and so so forth, right? So we talk about this this alternate. But again, very very important is the fact that 
we converted our analyt in memory analytics case into a case where we can actually persist the data that we receive. So um, if you want, we sort of managed to construct a, a primitive, primitive database. This was a fairly long video. Um, and in order to take advantage of the foreign memory access APS, um, one element that I actually forgot to mention throughout the video is to specify the flag uh, uh, minus minus add modules JDK incubator foreign. That being said, we finalized the, the video, video here. Um, enjoy the, uh, the source code and enjoy uh, using the new APIs. Uh, see you next time.